Welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be making these really awesome looking bubble chairs in Blender. This is going to be fantastic if you're into stuff like architecture or just want some basic assets that you can place into your scene. Um, you can see over here this is the final kind of result that I got. Um, I'll be uploading this final one to my Patreon but what we're going to be doing today is pretty much the exact same thing. Um, and I'll go nice and slow. One more thing I just want to also mention that if you guys haven't followed me on Instagram, I am on Instagram. It's a great place where you guys can tag me in some of the things you're working on and you can see some of the personal projects that I'm working on as well and some of the tutorials that I do. So just keep that in mind. All of that is in the description below. As always, my blend files will be on Patreon and uh, I think it's time to jump into this uh, fun little tutorial. So when you scene open up in Blender, we're actually gonna be using the default cube today. So grab that default cube, tab into edit mode, and we're gonna go ahead, right click, and just go subdivide, and then uh, let's right click one more time, go subdivide. I guess I could have just come here and dragged the number up. I don't know why I did that twice, but anyway. So we wanna subdivide it twice, and then we're gonna go into our right orthographic view by pressing free on a number pad, and let's just go G, Z, and take this up, like so. And what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and let's grab these verts over here at the front. Let's go X and delete them. And then we're gonna go enable our vertex select option. Let's grab these two here and go G and bring it down a little bit. Let's grab this one, bring it out like so. Just kind of making the shape. And then we're gonna grab this guy here, bring that in a little bit, drag that one up. And let's maybe bow this one out a little bit, grab this, bring it in. Just like that, okay? And then in the front, we just wanna select these ones here, these verts. Let's go X and delete those vertices. And let's just grab these guys at the top. Over here, let's go X and delete those verts. So it's an open thing like this. We're then gonna go and just select, holding and shift, select these three verts and press F to fill that. And let's grab these guys and press F to fill the faces. Then we're gonna just grab this guy here and just go G, Z, slightly bow it up a little bit, bringing these guys up. And then we're gonna press A to select everything, go S, X, just widen it a little bit. And then we're gonna go over here to our smooth option and let's just smooth this out like so. And you can kind of leave it at this, but you can make it slightly wider. I think that just looks a little bit better like this by going S and Y. But we want roughly just kind of even squares here. Okay, we're gonna tab back out, and now let's give this a subdivision surface modifier. And uh, let's go ahead and give it a solidify. And let's give it some solidity by bringing this value up a little bit. And um, let's go ahead, right click and go shade smooth. And here we have the base of our chair, or at least the, the thing that the upholstery will stick to. I think the base is gonna be the foot of it. Anyway, so now what we're gonna do is we can actually just reuse this and that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate and let's just right click to let go, tab into edit mode. And of this new selection, we're gonna go Alt S with everything active and just scale it in a little bit like so. And uh, we can actually get rid of the um, solidify. We don't need to see that. In fact, just for now, get rid of all of the modifiers. And to see things a bit better, I'm just gonna go out into object mode and just grab this bit here and go H just to hide it temporarily and let's just go back in here. And what we're gonna do is we're going to right click and go subdivide. And let's go here to our subdivision tab, bump it up to two. And let's go press A to select everything and let's with the smooth tool, just smooth it out just a little bit more. And now what we're gonna do, turn off our proportional editing and let's go to our edge select option, deselect everything. And now we're gonna go shift alt holding those two in, we're gonna come one, two, three faces up or edges up and come here to the end and select the fourth one. And then we're gonna skip another two, select this one, then select another, skip another two, uh, two edges and grab this one, skip another two edges, select this one here. And then we're gonna come here in the middle, we're still holding in shift and alt and we're gonna left click in the middle. And then we're gonna skip two and we're gonna click on this one. And then over here, we're gonna skip two edges and click on this one and then skip to click on this one that runs along the edge and then on this one as well, like that. And then we're gonna come over here, skip to click on this one, skip to, we'll have to come up here and click on this one. And then let's skip another two, holding and shift and alt that one. And let's just fill this in over here by holding and shift and let's just grab these two going up like so. And let's grab these guys going here, like that. 
Okay, so now we have all of those selected and let's go over to our object data properties and let's create a vertex group and let's assign those edges. Now we can go Alt A to deselect and let's test it by going select. Now we can see we have those active and let's go Shift and Alt and just left click on these edges all the way around. And let's just add those guys as well by assigning them to that group. And now we're gonna press A one more time. We're gonna right click and go subdivide. And now we're gonna go and let's come here with everything deselected and click select to see if we still have it active. We have a little bit too much active. So we're just gonna to go to our vertex select option, control minus, just to shrink it and then go control I or command I to inverse the selection. And let's just go ahead and remove those. So we only have this as the selection and we have more topology. Okay, so now we have that done. Let's can tab back out. Let's right click and just go shade smooth. And um, let's go ahead and give this a cloth. And at this point, it's a good idea to save. So I'm just gonna save this, call it some gibberish. And let's go ahead and under our cloth settings, let's go all the way down, enable pressure. And we're gonna go with something crazy. Let's go with 700 to start. And let's go down to, or I guess up to the quality and let's just make it 20, okay? And let's also go to our shape and just one more thing under the pin group, let's just enable group that um, we created here. And that's gonna pin those verts. And now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, we're gonna see this, but our normals are inverted. So this is normal. So this is tab back in. You can actually go over here to your visualizer and see that the normals are facing out. So we're gonna press A to select everything and go Alt N and just go flip. And now they're facing in. So now if we go back, go to frame one and we hit the space bar they're all facing in. So now let's go Alt H just to bring back our this thing that we hit earlier, this guy over here. And I'm just gonna tab into edit mode and just smooth that guy just a little bit more as well, like that. But this is kind of what we're going for. Now, um, we can grab this guy and tab into edit mode. And I'm just gonna scale this whole thing a little bit. And then in the right view, I'm just gonna go G and move it up and out just a little bit. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all of these edges running all the way along here. So Shift and Alt, just keep clicking, going all the way around, just to select all of these edges like so. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna go E to extrude and Alt S and scale them out along the normals. And then in our right view, we're just gonna go G and pop them in here. And you might have to scale them just a little bit. But we're just gonna kind of stuff them in here like that. So we have this border running around and in some places you may have to just enable proportional editing and just tuck them in. It's actually really easy to do. It's not that, that much work. Just going around like so. And then you're gonna go Control R, add in the loop here and go Alt S and just kind of scale that. And let's tab back out, save, and let's go to frame one, hit the space bar. And now we have that. And that's looking pretty awesome. Now we have it. So now let's just, um, Press A to select everything, go to frame one and go G, Z, move it up about here. Then we're gonna go shift A. We're gonna add in a cylinder, tab into edit mode and go S, Z and flatten it. Then G, Z, move it up. And at this point, um, you can really do this however you want. So I'm not gonna give any specific instructions. This is just the way you make a very simple kind of base. And then you can extrude it in. And there are so many ways you can do this. There's no right, wrong way here. You can make kind of whatever foot I'm just going E to extrude and Z, working my way up and I'll get to about here. I'll just do E to extrude, S, E to extrude, S, and maybe E to extrude up on a Z. And then I have something that looks like this. Might delete this bottom face. Maybe give this a little bit of a bevel, but really you don't have to overthink this bit at all. Just really keep it simple. And then tab back out, right click and go shade smooth. And then optionally you can give this a subdivision surface modifier to smooth it out, but that's kind of it. So now let's just go give this uh, 20 frames because we're not making an animation here. Let's just run the simulation from frame one. And at this point you could grab this and you can come here and apply the cloth. And then let's give this a subdivision surface modifier to smooth things out. And now we have this. So now let's go shift A, let's add in a plane. S to scale and then S, X. Let's tab into edit mode and maybe move this out a bit. And what I like to do is go out, Shift D to duplicate RX90, just duplicate this plane. 
And let's just make a simple little wall over here or backdrop. Something like this and control A apply that scale. And then you can grab your camera and you can move your camera however you want. So I'm not going to really cover the camera positioning because this is really up to you how you want to do that. But for me, I think I'm going to go with a nice side view like this. And I might just come and uh, I don't know, make it something like 90. And the focal length, completely up to you. Really, you don't have to do exactly how I'm doing it. But the idea here is just to have something like this. Okay, nice backdrop, make sure to save. And now let's just go ahead and enable cycles. And if you have a GPU, always use it if you can. And then under the max samples, we're gonna go with, I'm gonna say 90 for now. It should be fine with the denoiser enabled. And then we're gonna go Z and we're gonna go add in an area light and move it up. And let's go to our light settings. I'm gonna go with 200 and the strength. And then I'm gonna just increase that size and go Z and go rendered, something like that. Looks pretty cool. Might just rotate the light, bump up the strength. Really depends on the scale of your scene. Shift D to duplicate that light, rotate it in. I'm just gonna go with a simple two point lighting system like this for now. And then for good measure, we can go over here to our raw properties and under the color, you can add in a sky texture. And that's perfectly fine. For me personally, I'm just gonna go and add in an environment texture and I already have some on my computer, so I'm just gonna choose one that I like. But you know, the sky texture will work fine if you just wanna go with that. But here we have this. So now what you can do optionally is, well, you really should do this, but you can go to the internet and you can just type in Polyhaven in the search browser and then go to the Polyhaven website. And then you can just go to their textures, which are up here under the assets. And they're all already set up for Blender. So you just have to come here and search. So I'm gonna go with plywood. And you can see here, all sorts of wood comes up. You could use any of these you wanted to, but I just find the plywood looks really good and it matches. So you just click on that and you can download it at whatever resolution you want and just download the zip folder. Inside of there is a blend file and you're just gonna append that into your scene. The same can be said with the fabric. You can just go ahead to here and just type in fabric. And then they have all sorts of fabrics here. Not a lot to choose from, but you can go with the denim. I think I went with the leather red over here for mine, but you can pick whichever ones you want. There's a finer brown leather here as well. You can maybe even go for denim, whatever you want to go with. So download those two and then extract them and they'll be blend files somewhere in your computer that you can reference. So I'm going to go file, append. I've already got these somewhere on my computer. I'm just going to go to my asset library and these, this is where I extracted those zip folders that I downloaded. So I have the plywood here. Inside of there is a blend file. And I'm gonna to go to the material and click on that material. Now I'm gonna to go to my chair here and I'm just gonna to go to the drop down under my materials and click on plywood. Same can be done with this one here. Let's just go append. And I'm just gonna go, I think this one is actually on my desktop. So I'm just gonna go, so I'm just gonna go ahead and extract that first of all just so you guys can kind of see. And here it is. So I'm just gonna go file, append, go to my desktop and brown lever, here it is. And I click in there, go to the blend file and then go to the material, click on that. And then once I have that appended, I'm just gonna to come to the drop down and go for the brown brick. For some reason it calls it brown brick over here. I don't know why, but it's actually lever. And then I'm just gonna go over to my UV editing or my shading actually. And then you can just adjust the scale over here, so I might make, bump it up to five. It's completely up to you how you wanna go from here on, but that's kind of the materials I went with. Maybe even bumped it up to 12. And you can also go to your UV on editing, select everything and then go U and unwrap, and then kind of just scale it a little bit. It's completely up to you. I mean, you can really do this however you want. This is just kind of like how I did some basic materials. And you can grab this foot here and then go ahead, give that a material and then make it fully metallic and then bring down that roughness a little bit and maybe a bit darker in the value. And that's it. With my original, I even went and added some wooden um, panels to the floor. I added just a material to the back wall, made it a bit darker, just for a bit of contrast. But you know, you guys kind of get the idea here. So this is how you can make one of these bubbly chairs in a blender. I will be show you guys my original. It's pretty much the exact same thing. I just showed you guys how to do. I just um, did a little bit more of my lighting. I just added some materials to the floor. 
but it's really just the exact same thing. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. I will be uploading this model to my Patreon, so you guys can check all of that out in the description. And as always, you can also follow me on Instagram.